What's going on guys? Welcome to a new series called JavaScript Under the Hood. And the idea for this series is to look at the inner workings of JavaScript and what actually happens when we execute our code. So we'll be talking about stuff like the execution context, how JavaScript handles memory, the call stack, uh, asynchronous JavaScript, and some other stuff as well. It'll probably be about five or six videos, maybe even more if I can think of some other ideas and if you guys really like this. And I think this is fine for beginners as well as seasoned developers that might not know a lot of this stuff. Uh, and I don't know everything, but what I do know I'm going to put into this series of videos. Okay, so hopefully you enjoy it. In this particular video, part one, we're going to look at the threat of execution. We're also going to talk about the call stack. I'm going to show you how that works in both a diagram as well as in the browser itself. All right, so let's go ahead and get into it. All right, guys, so I thought that we could start off by talking about the threat of execution. So JavaScript is what we call a single threaded language. And to be more specific, a thread is a single sequential flow of control in a program. So it's basically like a like a process. And uh, over here, I'm not the best diagram maker, but just bear with me. So here we have one single thread. Okay, this dotted line and everything that happens, everything that's executed in JavaScript happens line by line. Okay, so here I just have some console logs, but it could be anything, any code. And in order for operation two to start, operation one has to complete and so on, you know, all the way down the line. Now, you might see people say that JavaScript is an asynchronous language. It's not. At its core, it works just like this. It's synchronous. However, we do have asynchronous capabilities. We have web APIs that can help us. Um, do things asynchronous. So if operation two, for instance, is going to take a while and a while in programming is, you know, one or two seconds, then we can go off and do it and we can keep going on the main thread. And then what happens is when that asynchronous operation is complete, it'll send a call back or a promise and, and get, push it back into the call stack. Okay, so and we'll talk about that in part three, how that works. But right now, what I want to do is just drill it into your head that JavaScript is synchronous. Everything happens line by line on a single thread. Okay, now a thread has a call stack and a memory heap. We're going to talk about memory in a later episode. Um, and since we only have one thread, we have a single call stack. And I think that it's important for you to understand how that works. So we're going to talk about that next. So a call stack keeps track of our functions. It's basically a stack of functions. It manages what we call the execution context. Now I'm going to talk all about execution context in the next video. So don't worry about that just yet. Just know that at the bottom of the call stack is our global execution context. That's always going to be at the bottom. And then we have our functions stacked on top. All right. Now, sta a stack is a data structure. Okay, so it doesn't have to be the JavaScript call stack. You can create any kind of stack, just like an array or a queue. Um, and stacks are LIFO, which stands for last in, first out. What that means is the last thing in is always going to be the first thing out. Okay, so um, to give you a better picture of that, let's take a look at some sample code here and what that would look like on the call stack. So we have three functions, first, second, and third. They just console log, but of course they could do anything. And we're calling them all on the on the global scope, right? Um, so if we look at the stack, what this will look like is we'll have the first function that runs first. It's going to get put on top of the stack. Okay, so in this case, it'll be right on top of the global execution context. And then first will pop off once that completes, once it's done executing. Then we hit second, that's going to get pushed on. And this is the terminology for these data structures is it gets pushed on and popped off. But second will get put on, then it will get popped off. And then third will run, so that gets pushed on and popped off. So very simple. It's a very, uh, a stack is a very simple, easy to understand data structure. Now, I just want to take a look at another piece of code and show you how the stack would work in this case. So here we have our first, second, third functions, but we're only calling first in the global scope. Okay, and then in first is where we're calling second and then in second is where we're calling third. So in this case, first would get called, gets put on the, the stack. All right. And then in first, second gets called. Now, first is still running, so that's going to stay on the stack. 
but then second gets called that's going to get put on the stack while we're in second third gets called so second's going to stay there then third gets put on okay once third is done executing it gets popped off then second's done gets popped off then first gets popped off all right so what i want to do now is show you that exact example in the browser So I just have uh, just an index HTML. I'm including a, a main JS file and we have the first example that I showed you where we have first, second, third. We call them all on the global scope and in the console, of course, it's just going to log this. But what I want to do is go into my sources tab and, and kind of step through this and show you how this works line by line, because in sources we can see the call stack. All right. Now. You're going to want to if you're following along, you don't have to. There's really no reason to. But we're going to place a breakpoint here, a debugger at. I'm sorry, we're going to put it down here. We're going to put that at first. Okay, so once I reload, it's going to just pause right there. You can see there's nothing logged in the console. So we've paused. Now let's go to the call stack and you can see this anonymous. So this is actually our global execution context. Okay, so you saw that in the diagram. Now I can click this arrow right here to step into the function. So I'm going to do that. And now we're in the first function and you can see that it got put on top of the stack. Okay, now if I go through so that you can see it logged first and then if I go through again, it's going to finish up the function and then it gets popped off of the stack. Okay, so remember it's it's last in first out. So now we're at second. I'm going to hit the arrow again. Second gets pushed on the call stack. Go through it gets pushed off, popped off. And then third, I'm going to run that. That gets put on. You can see it right here. Third. And then we'll go through it. Log and then it gets popped off. Okay, so it's the exact thing that I showed you in the diagram. Now I'm going to go ahead and take off this breakpoint. and just reload and then I'm just going to change this up to the second example. So in the first function, we're going to call the second and then in second, we'll call third and then we'll just get rid of uh, these two here. So we're just calling first in the global scope. Now in the console, it's going to do the same exact thing as the, the, the first example. However, if I go into sources, we're going to go ahead and put a breakpoint right at the right at first where this this whole thing starts. And then let's reload. Okay, so it's paused right now, but you can see we, we have created the global execution context. It's in our call stack and I'm going to go into the first function. So I'll click this arrow here. Now you can see that first has got it's now pushed on to the stack. All right, then we're going to go do the console log. And then once I click this again, it's going to run second. So notice now first is still there, right? Because we're still in the first function because that's where second is called. So second is now on the stack in second. We then call third. So I'll click the arrow call third. Now third gets pushed on to the stack and now we'll go ahead and execute third. Now it gets popped off second execute that gets popped off and then first. Okay, so it's always last in first out. Okay, so that that's a, a pretty basic example of how the call stack works. And I would suggest that as you're building projects, just just pop in the sources tab and take a look at the call stack. Obviously, it'll be much more complicated when you're working with a, an actual project than our little script here. But I think it will it'll help you out. It'll help you debug your code. Um, so hopefully you guys enjoyed this in the next video. In part two, we're going to go a level deeper and talk about the execution context.